Hey guys, what's going on? Look how small this thing is. It's really tiny. It's way smaller than I thought it was going to be. And it's too bad that I didn't get to see the bigger brother, the BLF Gigathor. But this is the Lumitop GT Mini. Uh, I got the cool white version. You can get the neutral tint or the cool white. And the cool white's probably closer to 5,000 Kelvin. And the neutral tint's probably going to be around 4,000 to 4,500. It's all about personal preference, really. Keep in mind that cool white is brighter than neutral tint. So this is the cardboard box that the GT Mini comes in, and I really love it when flashlight companies use the cardboard uh, cardboard box. It just looks more presentable, it's more eco-friendly, it looks cooler. We'll take it around the little sheath of things, I'm going to call it that. You guys can see the box here, Lumitop. I was really excited about this flashlight. At one point, this was actually one of the most talked about flashlights on candle power forms and budget light forms, and... I don't know if it still is, but it was one of the most talked about flashlights thanks to its insane throw. It's one of the smallest throwers on the market at 100, almost 140,000 CD. It's something that's only like four and a half inches long. I mean, that's incredible. And I fell in love with Lumitop when I got my very first one, the Duke. And I bought this over a year ago. I think it was like a year and a half ago. And I've dropped this thing. I've used it so much. You can see that the copper is tarnished or starting to tarnish, I guess. Uh, but this flashlight is one of my favorite lights. I use this every single day. It's fantastic. I just love it. And so that, le that led me to purchase my second Lumen Top. And I actually have the third one, the ODF-30C. Eventually it will be here. I got it from Fast Tech. I bought a Manker uh, TO2, I think, and it was out of stock or discontinued. Not discontinued, but it was out of stock or something like that. So I chose the... Um, the Lumitop ODF 30C. So I can't wait till that comes in, but we'll open the box to show you guys what's inside. As you guys know, nice little card. We'd love to hear from you. Warning burn hazard, set this aside. And here's the flashlight itself. Take it out of the package. All the stuff the flashlight comes with, and most flashlights come with, you have a nice lanyard here. You've got the spare O-rings, very nice lanyard. Now, one thing you notice, this light does not come with a holster. And to be quite honest, I'm completely okay with that. I have a whole bunch of holsters laying around from all my previous flashlights. I do not like using holsters. But to be honest, you really don't need one when it comes to this thing. It's so small, you can just fit it in your back pocket. And then inside there, of course, you have your instruction manual or instruction packet. Some other stuff in there, probably warranty information. GT Mini user manual. And then I believe this is a warranty card. So there it is in size reference, so you guys can see just how small this thing actually is. It's right next to the Claris X-T2CR. And of course the machining on this thing is fantastic. Nice, thick, sturdy body. Very, very nice heat sinking vents. I really like the way they did the heat sinking on this thing. Um, nice smooth reflector, very deep smooth reflector. Some dust particles on the lens I didn't get a chance to clean off earlier. So the emitter that's used in this is the XPLHI, one of my favorite emitters. And there was actually a lot of people that wanted to be the XHP35HI. But the problem with that is people don't realize that the XHP35 and the XPLHI, they may be the exact same dimensions. The cube or the square that surrounds the diode itself is the exact same size on the XHP35HI and the XPLHI. But the actual diode within that square it's actually just about a half a millimeter to a millimeter smaller on the XPL. So while the diodes look the exact same size, the yellow diode part within that square is a little bit smaller on the XPL. That's gonna give you a much better throw in a light like this. You go put in the XHP35HI in here, the throw is probably not going to be as good, obviously. The XPLHI, which is basically just a de-domed XPL, so I have these side by side so you guys can see um, that the XHP35HI and the XPL may be the exact same size, but the yellow part, the diode itself, is certainly just a little bit smaller on the XPL. XPLHI on the right, XHP35HI on the left. So hopefully this gives you guys a good uh, sense of how much smaller the XPLHI actually is opposed to the 35HI. So you guys can see in my beam shot video that the um, the Claris G35 and the Lumintop GT Mini actually have the exact same size hotspot. It's kind of crazy. You put them side by side at a wall 50 feet or 100 feet away, the hotspot is actually the exact same size. The Corona is a little bit brighter on the Claris, but the hotspot is exactly the same size. You know, one cool thing about this, this hobby is you get to see flashlights get more advanced and more powerful and brighter. And the more efficient that Cree Industries does with their LEDs, the more efficient their emitters get, the more power they can produce with less heat. And I remember it was like seven or eight years ago when I purchased this. The Sunway Man T40CS. And this thing was a monster. It really was. 500 meter distance on throw, 800 lumens. It was like the top thrower, you know, in 2012 or 2011 or whenever it came out. And now you got flashlights that just 
destroy this thing, and they're a third the size. The GT Mini has, I think, about uh, about four or five hundred more lumens. The throw is about 250 meters more, and it's half the size. So the specs are supposed to be 1200 lumens. This light is supposed to produce 1200 lumens, but there's a lot of tests that indicate on candle power forms and budget light forms that this thing is actually producing almost 1300 lumens, so about 100 lumens under spec. I really love the fact that Lumentop uses that double spring system or double gold plated spring system. You see that in a lot of higher end flashlights or flashlights that use a lot of current. Definitely some high quality here and expect nothing less from Lumentop. Lumentop also uses square cut threads for those people who love to cross thread their flashlights. The GT Mini is a very high intensity flashlight. Do not point the GT Mini directly at a person, animal, moving vehicles, or flammable materials. The GT Mini measures in at 132 millimeters in length and 50 millimeters width on the head. Somebody was definitely in a hurry when they wrote the instruction manual. Take a look at what it says. The emitter is the Cree XHLHI. So I cannot find anywhere in the instruction what the voltage range is, but I was told that it's 0.8 to 4.5 volts, meaning you cannot put CR123s in the Lumitop GT So Mini. one thing I actually noticed is the button actually has a light on there, and that light stays on constantly 24 hours a day until the flashlight's dead. Now the GT Mini has an electronic switch and there's a light on there, so there will always be a parasitic drain or a drain on the battery when it's just sitting all day long. But Lumitop claims 27 microamps, but I've heard it being as high as 250 microamps, so you're looking at an intensity of an incredible 135,000 CD, which is remarkable for a flashlight this size. 135,000 CD at 750 meters, that's about 2,400 feet, or just under half a mile. So now we are going to get into the user interface, which seems very complex due to the fact that there are so many modes in this flashlight and you're controlling them all with one button. But it's actually much easier than it sounds. So obviously you press the button one time it comes on and it remembers the last mode you used. It does have mode memory. However, there are no actual output numbers on the instruction manual for the modes due to the fact that it has a ramp up and ramp down system. So press the button on, hold it down, and it will ramp up, and it will ramp down, ramp up. Now you're seeing it flicker when it reaches the very top, that's 80%. Whenever it goes to the very top from holding it down, it goes to 80% and it flickers. It blinks to let you know it's at the very top. And as soon as you find a desired output, let go, and it will remember that mode, turn it off, leave it off for a second or two, turn it back on, and it will come back on that last mode you had it on. And you will reach the lowest mode, which is, whoops, I don't know why I did that. So to get into your strobe mode, double click for turbo and then double click again. And you'll get into your strobe, press the button once, it will go into SOS and other modes. Basically, hit Another awesome feature is the fact that it has a battery indicator. It tells you your battery voltage, which is great, so you don't have to take the battery out of the flashlight to check the voltage. All you do is press the button three times, one, two, three, and it will tell you your voltage. That was 4.1, and it will repeat the cycle again. One, two, three, four point one. So you can see the battery is 4.1 volts, so it's fully charged almost. Very cool feature. You have a lockout feature to lock the flashlight out so you can put it in your back pocket or whatever and not have to worry about it turning on. And all you do is press the button four times, one, two, three, four, and it will blink letting you know the battery is now locked out or the flashlight's locked out and you cannot turn it on now unless you press the button four times again. One, two, three, four, and then now it should blink. I did it too early. One, two, three, four, and it's not working so it's probably broken now. One, two, three, four. What have I done? I broke it. It's broken now. Oh, I guess you just gotta do it fast, sorry. Okay. And then five clicks of the button, you press the button five times, you can actually go into momentary activation. So one, two, three, four, five, and it will blink letting you know you are now in momentary activation mode. And so the only mode you have is the highest mode. It's basically momentary, which is a really cool feature to have. I think that's really neat. And then to get back in that mode, you just loosen and tighten the head real quick, and you're back into your regular output or operational mode. Now, I noticed on my model, there's not a whole lot of grease on the threads on the back and the front. It's very, very, very tight, so I'm going to have to put some more grease on there, or I may chew those O-rings up. And there is the head and the spring. So hopefully I've covered as much as possible on the Lumitop GT Mini. So there it is. If you guys have any comments or questions, reach me in the comments and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So thank you for watching.